Well, hello, everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to our East Bay Worship Center podcast. So good to have you guys with us. Today, I have my favorite guests, the favorite guests I have on this podcast, (laughs) my beautiful, wonderful, amazing wife, Julie Cox, Madre Julia, Pastor Julie, Jules, why don't you say hello to everybody? Hello. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm so excited to be with you guys today. We are excited to be um, together doing this podcast. We have some things we want to talk about, and I want to say this. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, Love your comments And if you share this, that would be wonderful. That helps us. And if you're listening on Spotify, that's incredible as well. So, man, we want to start it off today with a scripture. I'm going to read a scripture, and uh, we're going to get it going. But we have some topics we want to jump in, and we might have another special guest with us today as well. (laughs) So keep your eyes out for uh, our little Ewok, our little pup, our little Oreo the good boy. Yep. He wants to come to the podcast today. So there might be a barking eruption. I don't know. There might be a case of zoomies. You never know what's going to happen, but he's here with us today. And uh, thank you for tuning in. So I'm going to read a scripture. We're going to be talking about um, a couple things today. And I just, I wanted to read this. This is in Romans chapter 12, verse one. Therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is for us, his good and pleasing perfect will. So one of the things we're going to talk about today is transformation and transforming our minds. And um, Julie, you've been kind of studying this and looking into this. I kind of want to just give you the floor a little bit and we can have a conversation um, about this. But why don't you go ahead and jump on in and talk about a little bit of what God's been speaking to you on this topic. Well, there was a couple things you had recently preached, um, something at church and you were talking about being a doer of the word. Yeah. Um, so I kind of, I like to study words and phrases and get context and really get a clear understanding of what that stuff means. Probably more than the average person. I just enjoy like breaking apart words and figuring out meanings. I like to study the Greek and yeah. look at some of that stuff. So I was just kind of studying that to find out what that is. I think we even had some discussions about that. I feel like as a Christian, I am a doer of the word. I feel like I'm more conscious of that as a Christian. And I want to like always be a great witness and yeah. I'm a teacher. So my normal, like everyday life, like I still want Jesus to shine through me with adults and with children. And so I feel like I'm always like having to be on. And so I just was asking the Lord, like, what is that? What does a doer look like? And how can I do it differently? Maybe I'm already doing some of it, but how can I be better at it? Um, And it kind of sent me into like a little study. And I always feel like transforming minds and thoughts I, I really want to do a deep dive and I haven't had the time, but I know there's like science involved with that. Yeah, for I sure. I know there's like chemical brain. For sure. You know, stuff that's connected to our thoughts and our thought process. And I want to understand that more from that standpoint, from a science standpoint, because I know that as just a normal everyday Christian walking in the world, if I have to renew my thoughts, if I have to transform my thoughts, how is it for somebody that doesn't know the Lord? Yeah. And how are they like experiencing the world around them? And how are they finding the Lord in the midst of their hard stuff? Yeah. Um, because stuff, life in general is just tough. And yeah. I want to always, you know, be sharing and be ready and be prepared to share the message with somebody near me if I have to. 
And if God puts me in a position or asks me to do that, I want to be prepared and ready. And so I just, that comes with always having a clear mind and yeah. always putting the Lord in the forefront. So I don't know what, if I answered your question, but that's just kind of where I kind of took off to study it and learn a little bit more about it. And it has always just intrigued me, the scientific side of it. There's more to it than just the spiritual knowledge of transforming and renewing your mind. The word says renew your mind every day. Yeah. It says to do it daily. Daily, yeah. And if you're not doing that, I think that could be a key to you not feeling victorious in your thought process and how you live your life. And so I don't want to be that way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be stuck at the bottom of a pit in my thoughts yeah. and like not be able to get myself out of it. I want to feel like I can overcome those things as they come my way because life is tough. So I don't know. That's just kind of where it sent me off and just trying to study and figure out what the Lord says about being a doer. And I can't act if I'm stuck in my thought process. That's good. I can't move and can't grow and I can't do more if I'm stuck here. And I feel like, like, I don't want to dig deep to like, you know, growing up and all the things, but I feel like I probably learned an unhealthy way that when things got hard, um, like I, I know I was told in my childhood along my walk with the Lord that if things are hard, you're not in God's will. Ooh. If things are hard, like you're oh on the wrong path. If things are hard, you're not listening to the Lord. Or if something bad happened to you, it's because you're not in the will of God. And I think as a kid, I may not have understood that. But as I grew up, I feel like every time something got tough, I was like, I can't live up to what God's Shit. asking me to do. Like, how can I, how can I excel in this Christian life? if I can never get ahead or if I can never feel like empowered to do things. And I feel like I probably learned some unhealthy habits. And as an adult, I had to come to terms with life can be hard yeah, and I can still be in God's will. Yeah. And is that if I'm pressing into him and utilizing the tools that he's told me, his word and people around me and community, if I'm doing all those things and it's still hard, I can still be in God's will. Those That's things right. can coexist together. Yeah. Um, so I was just trying to learn and study and ask God, you know, what what does that look for me as a 40 something <laughs> year old woman that's lived you don't some look life. A day over 29. <laughs> I just I want to I want to be good. I want to be a good uh I, well, don't I think know. too, it's, I think what you're hitting on is really powerful, really powerful. For me it is. Um, because you're talking about, and it's a, it's kind of a cultural thing that happened in the church where don't talk about negative things. Don't talk about things that are tough. And there was a lot of terminology where it says glory to glory. I'm going glory to glory. And that kind of was taken out of context. And if something bad happens, then you must be, there must be something else going on. And but things actually, there's hard times and things get hard. Things got really hard for the disciples after Jesus left. And how some of the disciples left this earth to go be with the Lord is if you go back and study that, it's really intense. And so to have that, uh, what, what that produces is it produces a culture of hiding things. Mm. When you um, when you when you're not <clears throat> comfortable of sharing, man, I'm struggling, man, I'm dealing with this. Maybe the whole church is high praising it and they're worshiping, and you're kind of just like, I'm not feeling this. Then instead of being real with where you're at, you just fake it, and then that produces performance Christianity. And performance Christianity hasn't really produced the fruit um, that we need in, in the kingdom. And so what you're talking about is if something is hard or bad or difficult or something goes wrong, we shouldn't hide that. We should embrace it and know that we're in uh, <clears throat> the glory to glory is that the Lord is with us in the valley and the mountain. He is the glory. So when we say glory to glory, it's him. Mm. And so going through hard things doesn't mean you're out of the will of God or doesn't mean anything like, doesn't mean you have sin in the camp. There's sin, get the sin out. You need more holiness. You know, we believe in holiness. We believe that we should flee from sin, but <clears throat> there are things that are hard. Like children of Israel in the desert for 40 years, that, that wasn't easy. The cross was not easy. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the disciples, John, I'm thinking about John getting boiled in a vat of olive oil and then getting pierced and stabbed and then thrown to the island of uh, Patmos, or I always say that word wrong. You study Greek words, I <laughs> terribly say them. But um, that's why we're a match made in heaven. No, just kidding. <laughs> but um, so to me, I think it's a topic that needs to be talked about and needs to be understood because how many parents, how many people are trying to raise kids right now and do this and there's hard things or they have a child that's harder than another child and they're afraid to really talk about the difficulties that they face. Mm-hmm. Or maybe someone's going to a job where they're just like, man, I know this is providing for my family, but this is difficult. And as Christians, sometimes we were told to avoid difficult conversations, avoid difficult things to say. And you come into church and you say, man, God is good all the time. Yeah, God is good. God is good. And and I get it. You're saying that no matter what happens to you, God is good. Right. But hey, I'm actually dealing with this right now and I'm struggling and I'm having a hard time. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're weak-minded. It doesn't mean your walk with the Lord isn't right. It doesn't mean, oh, you're an immature Christian and you just need to... No, these things were tough. I mean, when James was writing to the people he was writing to, they were going through all kinds of stuff. Um, And so I think it's okay to say, I'm not okay, and this is hard right now, but the Lord is with me. I still feel close to Him, but I'm going to make it through. And I also think when we overthink things, we never jump onto the battlefield or never jump onto the field because we are constantly having to say everything has to be perfect, everything has to be right, everything has to mm-hmm. be. And sometimes we just have to step out on the battlefield yeah. and and go for it. So um, I see you got some notes over there. Is there anything you want to <laughs> share with us? Oh, gosh. I don't know if it's anything specific. I just felt like the Lord was showing me. I'll say this. I don't feel like I'm typically a positive person. I don't yeah. feel like I, I, it's not my personality to sit in my sadness or to sit, yeah. you know, as soon as something terrible can happen in my life, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty resilient. I can jump back and, and get back to where I need to be. I kind of put in my uh, on my own thought just because I'm structured and organized in my thinking, but I like to sit and like tell myself I have 60 minutes to get this together. Yeah. <laughs> and I got one hour. If yeah. I can't turn this thing around in one hour, then I know I need to get with the Lord and yeah. get some extra help. Yeah. Um, Cause usually I can bounce back and do fine. Um, so I felt like the Lord was really showing me like, that's not standard procedure for everybody. Yeah. That is, that is my personality. And so I know when I need him and, and, the, and I need to sit with him and, and figure things out. But for the, like a person that maybe isn't like that, maybe a person that needs to sit in their feelings a little longer or needs to kind of sit with the Lord longer yeah. and, and maybe needs the help to get into a resiliency and back, back it back into, you know, where you were. Yeah. Um, I just felt like the Lord was showing me that tough times and him being good, just like you kind of mentioned, all those things can still be happening at the exact same time. Um, And then I felt like he showed me the picture of a plant. I felt like he showed me in a dormant season when a plant's not growing, we don't see what's happening in the soil. We don't see what's happening internally inside the stems or the leaves or even the blooms or the whatever's going on. We don't see that. And then when the spring comes, that flower can take off or that plant can take off. And all of a sudden, all we see is the growth. Yeah. You know, we don't know what's all happening inside. And so I felt like he was equating that to me and showing me a picture of a plant. Like just because you're in transition of even your thought process, even just because you're in transition doesn't mean there's not growth happening. You sitting with me and letting me speak to you, even in that dormant time, even in transition, even when things are hard, that um, the good of him can yes. still excel. Yeah. The good of him can still, you know, be the highest thing that we give attention to. It's okay to be real and it's okay to go through hard times and, and still know God's going to come through and I'm in the right place and I'm following God's will just because we're in God's will does not mean it's going to be a hundred percent perfect. That's right. The whole way. That's good. And that, and I don't know that that's ideal in any situation. Of course we'd want that, 
But I just think of some of like the real obvious tough times that we've experienced, even just in our family, our marriage, our life. Um, Growth did not happen without the pressing. Growth did not happen without the hurt and the pain and the things that came. I think God being available to us to kind of transform our thoughts and work through those things and him being that ever present help that we need. Well, being honest, I think too, being honest with where you're at, you have to start there. And when you're talking about a plant um, or grass down here in the South, our grass goes dormant, you know, and it, it turns brown. And when we first moved here, we're like, why is our grass dying? You know? And our neighbors are like, it's not dead. It's just dormant. And we're from California. So we're like, I had to be like, oh, okay. But then pull up my phone and Google it. What does that mean? (laughs) You know, like, I don't, I have no idea. I'm from California. So just looking into that and understanding that once the spring hits and that rain comes and the temperature goes up and you're getting nitrogen in the ground, all of a sudden it just takes off and it looks like, oh, now it's alive. No, there were things, there was repairs going on in the soil. There was things going on in the ground. There was nutrients that had to break down the leaves. So out here, the leaves fall to the ground and then they kind of go into the ground and replenish the soil. And those things are a process and you can't um, ignore the process. Mm -hmm. And there's beauty in the dormant grass. There's beauty in those leaves if you look at it. But if you only look to the green grass and you're like, yeah. Man, I'm going from that, you know, glory to glory, or uh, I keep saying that, but it's just, it's something to think about that you said the plants that are dormant and then there's stuff going on in the soil and there's things being done that are going to bring it to life. Um, that's so powerful. And sometimes we only look at the springtime and the summer when things are all vibrant, but they're still alive you know, from December until March. That's true. Yeah. They're still tapped into life. They're still yeah. tapped into, to a living thing. They're still getting the nutrients and the replenishing. Yeah. It's just funny when we see people go through trials or come through on the other side, you know, all we get to see is like, wow, you would never guess that happened to you or those things. And, you know, but we weren't there or we weren't part of their darkest moments. Yeah. And, um, some of those dark moments is really when you learn who Jesus truly is being such a helper and friend and in the hard times. Um, but that, that can still, you can still be walking through those transitions in a hard moment and God still be there. Yeah. So it's, we got to learn how to associate, not just necessarily bad things with, God's not there. You're not in the right thing or you're not doing it's nobody can judge that. You know, you're only accountable to the Lord. So if he's taking you on a path and giving you instruction it, it, to the world around you, it might look like you're not doing the right thing, you know, or even people around you were saying, well, that maybe the Lord's not in that. It Did this come from when I was talking about harvest and I was saying that uh, harvest is one of the hardest times and yeah, we always maybe. we always talk about the harvest yeah. um, as this oh it's harvest time and there's like this celebrating and dancing and then when I looked into it talked to a couple people that you know farmers and you look at what farmers have yeah. to do harvest time is the hardest time for them yeah because that's the culmination of all their planting and watering and sowing and reaping and then they have to gather up everything and work around the clock to make it all happen to bring in that harvest and then they have to store it properly Mm -hmm. and so i think sometimes when we look at hard things we don't see the lord yeah but really we need to flip that and say because it's hard it's valuable yeah because it's difficult i need a value what do i need to glean and learn from this time and i know there's people out there listening to us right now that, like I said, they could be having a hard time with the child or they're having a hard time with a particular situation or maybe, you know, there's financial things going on. I just want to encourage you that God is with you. And mm. just because you're going through something right now doesn't mean he's left you. It does not mean that at all. Um, we wouldn't know, we wouldn't know gratitude or thankfulness or praise or celebration yeah. if we didn't have to, you know, kind of 
go through the struggle a little bit and come out the other side. And so I just think it's a powerful thought. Um, I want to do this. I want to um, transition a little bit and talk about something that I want to hear you speak to and <clears throat> something that happened to our family. Some of you guys out there know um, that this happened and maybe some of you don't know or don't know the full story or you've heard, but um, a, a, I can't remember exactly um, how long ago, but from filming this podcast, I can't, I still can't even remember when it happened, but we had a situation uh, happen here at our home where I just got home from lunch and I was, um, took the kids and some of the interns to lunch at well, Dylan, my nephew and um, Canyon and Vanning, my kids. And we came home and we're hanging out and I was talking to um, Pastor Scott on the phone and all of a sudden I heard screaming and hollering and yell yelling and I came out of the room I was in and there was somebody random inside of our house. They actually ransacked Canyon's room and came after Canyon and I just feel like we can't be complacent. We can't be idle. We always have to be alert. And it really brought me back into a place of um, Julie and I had to parent and deal with the situation where somebody kind of came in our home. It was it was just wild. I mean, you, everybody who has kids, you know, out there the the screams of a kid that's like everything's kind of okay, you know. But this was I heard my son at the top of his lungs, Dad, 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 someone's in our house, someone's in our house, Dad. They were screaming, and I came out and on the phone with Pastor Scott and is unbelievable. He heard like screams in the background. So he came over and this person was, I don't know how to say it other than just not mentally there. Um, possibly maybe even, um, demon possessed things wrong with them. And I know that's, uh, um, you know, people might hear that and be like, Whoa, you're that's no, but it, she had multiple different voices and my nephew Dylan acted quickly but this really kind of brought in this attack of the enemy and fear yeah. for a minute tried to take foothold in our family yeah. because your, your home is your sanctuary. It's your safe place. And it's the middle of the day at like one or two in the afternoon. And Julie was at school teaching. So she wasn't even here. We've never seen this person in our life. People in our neighborhood hadn't seen this person. And, uh, some of our neighbors said she was walking down the street, pointing at our house and, you know, going through people's mailboxes. And she was saying all kinds of stuff. Like, I don't want to go to jail again. And, you know, she kept saying this name, Caitlin. And we kind of, that situation kind of ended up where we couldn't really do anything. We couldn't really deal with it and try to press charges. And we kind of just had to walk away from it. And then we were left trying to parent and figure out how to help our children and deal with some of that. Mm -hmm. Julie came home early from work that day. I remember we anointed our whole house. We prayed over our house. We had worship for like hours. We just went ham and just <laughs> anointed everything. I know some people might be like, why well, that doesn't? No, man, we anointed our whole house. We anointed <laughs> every door, every doorstop. Because I'm telling you that came in and it was a spirit. Yeah. It was an assignment from the enemy and it make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. I mean, you just don't ever think that would happen. Yeah. And, and she went after our daughter and thank the Lord Canyon was okay. And Canyon um, is doing good from that. But there was a time where we had to work with her a little yeah. bit, but you came home and Man, we could uh, we were, could feel the presence of God in our house, and we were worshiping and just seeking the Lord. But it really was like a little bit of a wake up call when you step out and you do things for the kingdom. Yeah, uh, we had a moment where we got together as a family. We were sitting on this couch right over here, and we got together as a family, and we talked and we let our kids share, and we said, "Hey, this is we've we've planted a church, and we're going after, and we're." doing everything to advance the kingdom and we're going to be attacked, you know, and deal with yeah. these kinds of attacks. Um, yeah. I think that opens up a whole nother realm <laughs> of when you are on assignment for the Lord and you're doing something he's asked you to do, then you are equally, um, 
reachable to the advancements of the enemy. Yeah. Like I feel like just as the God that we serve has a plan, so does the enemy. Yeah. And so to me, this goes kind of a little bit back more to transformation and renewing yeah. your mind, because if you allow your thoughts to paint a narrative for you, that's right. if you allow your thoughts to paint a smoke screen story to distract you from what God's asked you to do, then you can get caught up in your thoughts and it can take you down a whole rabbit trail that you're not interested in actually going into. It just is where you're allowing your thoughts to take. So I feel like we sat on this couch for like, an hour, I would say for about an hour and we were sad and I was hearing my kids talk I've been recount what happened and you were saying it just sounded like you said, unbelievable. Like a movie or something. Yeah. And I feel like I kind of learned just probably more so in my later years that when things don't add up in, in the natural, when things seem so unbelievable, when it's like, whoa. That sounds like a movie. That yeah. sounds weird. That sounds, then I know it's unreasonable and it is an attack of the enemy. And yeah. so I felt like as I was hearing everybody recount the stories and talk about it, I started getting that picture like, okay, this is not anything that should have happened. Yeah. This is totally something that happened in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Like we've got to come against that. And I felt that rise up in me. So I feel like we sat there for like an hour kind of listening to it. And then I was like, okay, no, we got to gain authority over this because yeah. if I allow Canyon to continue talking about this, the scariness of it and painting that narrative and it started building up in her head, it was getting yeah. bigger, yeah. the thoughts. And, um, I could just, I felt that. So I felt like we had to overcome that and take that down, um, going and walking through the house, anointing the house, praying all the things. Um, and then just getting out of the house. Like we just went out to dinner. We were like, we yeah. got to get out and space out and figure this out. And parenting it, like nobody could have ever showed Rob and Julie Cox how to parent Canyon and Banning in that situation. No, there's no Like book you or had anything. to, yeah. there was no do this, do this, do this. Like you're right. And those are things that you have to rely on the Lord. And so uh, because it was so unreasonable and I truly didn't know what we were up against in the spirit but I recognize that it was attached to your calling of starting a church. I did see that as a direct attack. It's like the enemy recognized he couldn't get to you, but he knew he could get to your kids. Ooh. And he knew that would keep you in, yeah. you know, um, dad mode of like yeah. protection and all the things. And I felt like that was a, a way he could get to you. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. We just, we have to pray through those things and ask the Lord what he's trying to show us. Um, but what a learning and valuable lesson for our kids to see. Um, as crazy as that situation was, I had to keep, I couldn't get away from. It was the best things that could have happened for that crazy That's of a right. scenario. That is like right. it was in the daytime. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't at night. Like we could clearly see this person. Nobody they got came hurt. came through our garage. Yep. Nobody got hurt. Dylan was here and yep. acted so, you know, courageously. Yeah. I mean, just all the things you were on the phone, like your guard yep. was down. You were, it's in the middle of the day. Who's coming in the yep. house? Like, that's weird. That's a weird, crazy thing to happen. It is. So for all of the things that had to have happened, that could have gone so bad. Yeah. You know, there was no violence. There was no, you know, guns or weapons yep. or anything like Nothing that could have all yep. changed with just a twist of a different circumstance or different detail, you know, but it wasn't, it was the best case scenario for what yeah. happened. Well, and it goes all the way back to what you were saying in the beginning of there's hard things, there's hard seasons, there's difficulties. And if you take that way of thinking, you're going to say, oh, well, we should quit. We should give up or we're, you know, but this kind of situation to me is evidence. That's why going through hard things or when crazy things happen, you can't just always go to like the negative. This is going all the way back to what you were talking about, about transforming your mind and how you think about what's going on mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah. We could have stayed in that, man, that was scary. That was crazy. You can't believe that happened, but we didn't. Um, and we didn't camp on it either. We didn't stay in that moment. We, we got past it and we know that yes, it was hard, but God was still in that and he protected us and God was in that. So he's in those difficult seasons. He's yeah. in those times yeah. where stuff comes out of left field and happens to you. He's still there. Yeah. 
And so I think you did an amazing job, actually, <laughs> leading us. I mean, I kind of was a little bit in shock and sat back, and I got no problem saying that you came home and took authority and took a posture of a warrior, and it was amazing. Because, no, we're not going to allow this to happen. And dealing with the fear, there was no... I've never heard a sermon. I've never read a book. I've never seen anything in Bible college that would equip me <laughs> to deal with somebody randomly That's coming hilarious. in your house and and doing that. It That's true. It's stuff that you're not, there's not a book written on that, you yeah. know? Um, so I think it's so interesting to know that God was, was with us and protected us. And, and being a mom and dad, sometimes you have to deal with like these most crazy things that, yeah. you. Know. I mean, we were coming home from eating a hamburger and everybody was just, we had been working all that morning and the kids were helping me yeah. and we were just coming home from eating a hamburger and there's no way when we were eating a hamburger that someone yeah. would have said, Hey, you're going to go home and then somebody's going to come in your house. And you know, that, that's just not, yeah. But God knows and yeah. he knew and he was also there and present. I feel like he gave Dylan the mind to act. He gave even our own kids did the right thing in that yeah, scenario. Like yep. you don't ever want to put your kids in that kind of situation. But for the situation they dealt with, they did everything right. They got on the phone and called 911. They closed the door. They they yeah. knew to scream for help. I mean, you never know how you're going to act in scenarios like that. So like I was so proud that they knew what, what to do, too. that God gave them the forethought to do those things in the midst of the crazy. Um, and so you guys all did the right thing. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't anything that you did wrong. Um, we weren't doing anything wrong. We'll be locking our garage door though going forward. <laughs> the door has not been left open <laughs> yeah. again since yeah. then. Yes. Yeah. So hey, we learned a lesson. Yeah, we, we did. It's so funny. We learned a lesson. But don't put your guard down. That's another yeah. thing I learned as a parent. Like when your guard's down, it was a great valuable lesson the enemy can come in. And so you always have to be aware and alert and in tune. Things can still happen. It's not that, but I felt like I was dealing with a minute, like a question, like, Lord, have we allowed something to come in here? Like, how did, how that person gain access? Yeah. How'd they get in? And I feel like he put me at ease and was like, that's not what this is. That's not what this is. So, and I felt like he twisted my thoughts back, like yeah. elevate me. I protected you. I Amen. did the best that I yeah. could have done for you in that situation. And you need to give my attention there. So I felt like we had to direct ourselves that's back totally to him. totally changing your mindset yeah. and changing it completely. And yeah. that, that one simple thing changed the whole atmosphere in our house, changed our attitude, changed our temperament. We actually had a fun night that night. Yeah. We all went to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> And yeah. had had fun yeah, with did. you know our family and friends, yeah. and and it you know that that to me was a powerful lesson too. But you cannot, um, especially if you're doing big things for the Lord and you're going after and you're following your call with Him, you can't just let down your yeah. guard and just anything you know let things just come at you. Have to be really protect yourself, yeah, and keep your guard up, yeah. And when it comes to your kids, I mean, any parent is in the same place that we are, you know, you're doing everything you can to keep your kids safe and yeah. protected and don't mess with my kids. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Mess with me. That's fine. Don't yeah. get with my kids. So when that felt like it was a direct attack on our children, um, I think it brought up yeah, some fierceness in the, in the parent world. It did. You are fierce. You are fierce. I feel that about you too. That was just, uh, stories of, uh, Two pastors, people just being in the ministry. Jeez Louise. Yep. This little journey's been been interesting. But aren't we like I'm just grateful. I'm thankful. I like, am too. I feel like we're learning and gaining so much wisdom in it and it's good. I think it's really it is good. good. It's real good. Well, we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us. Um, we greatly appreciate you guys. And if you're listening on Spotify, thank you. Um, thank you. If you're watching on YouTube, send us your comments. We would like that <laughs> or to share this. Or if you have any topics we would like to hit, mm. uh, you would 
you would like us to hit, please let us know. But um, I will say this, me and Julie are going to be doing more podcasts together, so be on the lookout for that. And see you on the next one, or see you Sunday at church, (laughs) or see you somewhere. Bye. Bye.